what, what the haters talking about. Yeah. What's up, family? Martin Luther King Jr., icon, the big man, the legend, the myth. Here's why I never liked Martin Luther King Jr. growing up, right? I was always taught that if somebody put their hands on you, you try your best to knock a patch of meat out their asses. And for the most part, that works for me. Like, it worked for me when I was a bully. I remember being a bully in the fourth grade. And the parents of the kids that I was bullying, they had met with my mom. They met with the principal. They met with the teacher. Nothing worked until one day I was walking down the street coming from school. And some older kids was coming my way. And I identified them as, as family members of the kids that I was bullying. And it was like a gang of them. And I'm walking toward them. And as soon as I get it, like about right, like just a few feet away, maybe 10 feet away, I see a car coming across, coming on the street. I see a car coming. So right when the car like get really, really close where I think I can jet across the street <laughs> and, and slow them down, I do it. Run to the house, come out, get my family. We come back out, we all fight, right? Now, the point, uh, the moral to that story is that even though I fought them. We came back and fought them. It was a fight that I didn't want to have again because these people was fighting back. They would not allow me to continue to beat up on their loved ones, right? Bullies don't like fights. They don't like hard battles. They like pushing people around. They like the easy target. When I dealt with bullies, when I stopped being a bully in elementary and I started dealing with bullies who were messing with other folks and sometimes who would try to bully me, anytime I went upside their head, that's always got their respect. All that talking and pleading and ooh, ooh, why you hitting me? Ooh, 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 all that stuff, man, that don't work. It don't work for bullies. What works is when you put something on their asses. That's what works. When you jeopardize their protection, when you jeopardize their safety, that's what works for bullies. Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X were two great civil rights icons and human beings. They'll forever be ingrained in the minds of, of people throughout civilization. I mean, they did that. But Malcolm was my dude because Malcolm said by any means necessary, you get somebody off your ass. You take care of your business. You make sure that you don't allow your manhood to ever be compromised. I like that because coming from where I came from, that worked for me. Now, here's the thing. Malcolm and Martin, they had different philosophies on how to go about bringing change in America as it relates to black people. Malcolm grew up in a middle-class household with 
and, and educated parents. And, you know, he grew up educated. Martin grew up underprivileged. And he grew up in a hostile environment where education wasn't stressed. And so therefore he had little education in terms of, in terms of uh, the institution of education, you know, institutional education, right? Malcolm believed in any means necessary. Martin believed in turning the other cheek when it comes to violence. Now, Martin was the type of dude who stood his ground. That took a while for me as a youngster to really, really grasp. I couldn't grasp it. All I saw is that a dude getting his ass whooped, getting rocks thrown at him, and he ain't throwing no rocks back, or he ain't throwing no bullets back. And he keep getting beaten down. And I'm like, man, the way you stop that, man, put something on their ass. I know, man, I, I know for a fact that works. I don't care what none of y'all say. I know for a fact when somebody put their hands on you and you get on that ass, man, that works. I mean, I'm telling you, it works, boy. It works like, like that. So I couldn't respect my, Malcolm. I mean, I couldn't respect Martin. I couldn't respect that at all. I couldn't respect it at all. As I got older, more mature, I started thinking, how many people do you know would sacrifice their life for something that they truly believed in. Both, the, both Malcolm and Martin believed in equality for black people, and freedom and justice. They believed in that wholeheartedly. But they had different philosophies, therefore they took different paths to meet their objective. I could easily appreciate Malcolm's because I come from that environment, so I saw that's what works when you're dealing with people who wants to push you around and take what you have and disrespect you. This is how you deal with them. This is how you get their respect. This is how you get them off your ass. Malcolm came from a, I mean, Martin came from a different environment. Therefore, he, he came from, a, from an environment where what people oftentimes would talk out their differences. But what he didn't uh, face was the brutality that America had. You know, he didn't really face the brutal people, the, brutal, the brutalness of how some people are in this world. And until he became that civil rights leader and he started being attacked and things like that. So, he used the best knowledge and information that he had. His, he used his skills to obtain the objective that he wanted, to pursue that objective that he wanted. And when I think about it, I'm like, man, how many people do I know? Knowing, first of all, knowing that he would be attacked, knowing that his life was on the line, speaking up. Let me tell you something. Anytime you speak up for black people in America, especially, you're going to be attacked. Anytime you try to help black people in any type of way, you are going to come under attack. If you try to give black people information to help them to improve their conditions, their, their livelihood, anything, you're going to be attacked because the people who feel that, that they need to attack you they feel like anytime black people is winning, they got to be losing. So they can't stand to see any type of black progression, but at the same time, they'll complain about the black people who aren't progressing. They'll complain and say they're the reason. Look at them. They don't deserve rights. They don't deserve to be treated fairly. They don't deserve to be treated with dignity. They don't deserve to have education or whatever. Lock them up, put them in a cage, put them down. That's their, that's their mentality. But they're severely threatened by any type of black progress. 
So anytime you try to help black people, you are going to come under attack. That is why Malcolm was believed in violence if somebody was violent toward him and he was murdered. Martin Luther King believed in nonviolence and he was murdered. The main commonality, both had great aspirations. Both had a great love for black people and the desire to see black people get their due and be just treated fairly. Not have special privileges, just be treated fairly. And they both were killed. They both were telling black people to stand up for yourself. Be counted. Get what's due to you. They both were telling white folks to stop being prejudiced. Stand up if you see racism. Speak on it. If you don't, you just like the person. You ain't no better than the person that's committing the act. Silence is consent. Both of them was very, very adamant about that, holding white people accountable, whether they were practicing actively practicing racism or whether they was passive about it. So after I looked at it like that, I was like, man, I just don't know a lot of people who would sacrifice their life Sacrifice the possibility of being taken away from the people that they love the most, their children, their wife, their mother, father, sisters, brothers. I don't know a lot of people who would sacrifice their life for something greater than them. This is what changed my mind about Martin Luther King Jr. And this is why I really have a reverence for that dude today, because he made the ultimate sacrifice. And I just don't know a lot of people who would do that. No more talk. You know what the ladies talking about? Yeah.